it. Right, so you now join me in the Affinity QX30. And I must be honest, Infinity is a brand I don't know a great deal about. So it launched in 1989 in America, then it came over to the UK in 2009. Uh, the brand hasn't sold a great amount of cars in the UK because it is still a growing brand. You know, let's face it, 2009 wasn't that long ago. So like my last four videos, I'm afraid the exterior driving footage has been lost. So here are some clips direct from Infinity. The model tested is for range topping premium tech, which starts from £34,225 and comes with features such as Nappa leather seats, power front seats, navigation, rear view camera with front and rear parking sensors, plus dual zone climate control. But a few options have been added to this model, such as the chestnut bronze paintwork, Bose sound system, safety pack and cafe teak leather, meaning that this model is priced at £37,725. But what about engines? Well, the choice is limited for the QX30. You can either have a 2.0-litre petrol or a 2.2-litre diesel, both of which are mated to a 7-speed automatic gearbox with all-wheel drive, although the premium tech model is only available with a 2.2-litre diesel. But what power does it offer? 170 PS, which is about 167, 168 brake horsepower. It's got 350 newton meters of torque and it's mated to a seven speed dual clutch auto. So it will hit 62 miles per hour in 8.5 seconds and the top speed is 134 miles per hour. Combined run you get 57.6 miles to the gallon. Okay, it's not the most frugal car going but it should be enough to get you by. But what's it actually like to drive? Well, let's find out. So this is based on a Mercedes A-Class platform. So a lot of the switch gear is very familiar in here. Right. Stop start doing its job. Right, okay. Steering's got a nice weight to it. See, see what this gearbox is like. Engine's got a good amount of grunt to it. And so far, the auto gearbox feels pretty smooth. I've not noticed any jerks so far. It's quite a smooth drive. So let me talk you through the inside of this car. It's quite nice, it's laid out quite sensibly. I would like the, um, the infotainment screen to be a little bit bigger, so it is a little bit disappointing. And by the looks of it, it is touchscreen, but it feels quite far away, so I'm having to really reach to get to it. But the display seems pretty decent. It's not the slickest system I've ever used before. But it's not too bad either. It's, yeah, it's presented quite nicely, but it just feels like I'm really having to reach to get to it, which is a little bit annoying. Another thing I'm a little bit disappointed is that the dials are analog. So I have got a little digital display in the middle here, but the dials are your standard analog dials and there's not much of a sense of technology in here. So let's try and get, get to grips with the uh, infotainment system a little bit more, which I won't lie, it's not that easy to use on the move. It's not quite as intuitive as you'd want it to be. Ah, here we go, you've got controls down here. There we go, that's more like it. Right, so a few moments ago, I was complaining about the... Um, about the infotainment system and how it's difficult to operate on the move. Well, you've actually got a dial down here, so apologies for that. Let's be complaining about something which uh, has got a solution to. So that's more like it. So that makes it easier to operate on the move. Actually, in fact, that makes it a lot easier. But the inside feels pretty nice. You've got premium materials throughout. You've got plenty of leather in here. The brown leather isn't really to my taste, but horses for courses. But the seats are nice and comfortable. The leather feels pretty plush. The steering wheel does feel a little bit big though. I don't know if that's just me being picky. I've, I'm pretty sure that's me being picky, but the steering wheel is quite nice to hold. There are quite a few buttons on the uh, on the centre console, but it seems to be laid out relatively well. There are a few cheap plastics in here. Don't get me wrong. And I don't really like the feel of the um, shift paddles on the back of the wheel. Again, they feel a little bit cheap, but the rest of the car is pretty nice. 
I do really like the big leather patch on the um, on the dash. That's nice. And you also got the um, the black leather here as well. But anyway, onto the car and onto the driving. What's the diesel engine like? It's got a good delivery. It's nice and grunty. It's what you want from a diesel. It's nice and talky. The automatic gearbox seems to be pretty smooth. And the ride is smooth as well, actually, come to think of it. But it's still pretty dynamic. It doesn't corner as flat as the F-Pace I drove earlier, but the F-Pace is a more sportier setup, so you'd have to expect that. The automatic gearbox has got a nice response to it, so when you put your foot down, a little bit of delay, but not that much. It's not really worth complaining about, if you ask me. Brake pedal's got a decent amount of feel to it as well. I wouldn't say it's the best out of the cars I've driven today, but it's certainly not bad. It's not too bad in the corners. There is a bit of body roll, of course, with it being an SUV. And the grip is okay, it's not outstanding. But it's enough to be but it's enough to get you by. Ooh. That is pretty brisk. Not bad at all. Especially when you consider this has only got 170 PS, which isn't that much. Well, it's a fair amount, but I think that's a pretty good power delivery from this engine. Right, what's it like when you want to take control of the paddles? So into fifth. Drop it down to fourth. Back to fifth. Changes are pretty slick. I wouldn't say they're quite as sharp as the F pace I drove earlier, but it's certainly not a slow gearbox. But when you leave it to its own devices, it will get the job done pretty nicely. It's quite a nice smooth car. The diesel can be a little bit droney when you get it towards the top of the rev range. But when you're just cruising along, very silent you can't really hear it it's a bit of tire noise but nothing to really complain about and this is a comfortable car it's nice it's relaxing just feel like I want to sit back and just eat up for miles really this is a very civilized way to go about motoring it's not the sort of car I would buy but if you're looking for a smooth refined SUV this is definitely worth looking at. Okay, I know a lot of you will, will look at the Infinity badge and not really know about the brand's pedigree, and that makes perfect sense. I imagine a lot of you would rather look at other brands, but take a chance of this. It won't disappoint you. Well, I don't think it will. Let's put the um, gearbox back into drive. And foot down again. That is responsive, that's impressive. And into sixth gear it goes, oh, into seventh. There we go. And when you leave the automatic gearbox to its own devices, you can't really notice the changes. Each change will barely unsettle your hair, in all honesty. I think smooth is a good word to, um, to sum up this car. It doesn't make a fuss about things, it doesn't shout at you or make a drama about things, it just guides you along very nicely. It's not the most exciting of cars, but if you're looking for a comfortable quality SUV, it's definitely worth looking at. Okay, it hasn't quite got the badge appeal of other cars, but if you want something that's a little bit different and if you want to stand out from the crowd or, or just be brave enough to try something different, then the QX30 is definitely worth looking at. I also think it's quite a good looking car. I wouldn't quite have it in this colour. Uh, I don't know what the official colour is. It's kind of like a mocha brownie colour and it's not my cup of tea. Um, it sounds funny, funny to say with it being a mocha sort of coloured car, but it's a good looking car, don't get me wrong, and I do like Infinity style in the fact that it's a little bit of something 
you know, it's something out of the norm. It's something a little bit outside the box. So, time to sum up. So, the Infinity QX30. Now, as I said at the start of the video, Infinity is a brand that I've not really done, well, I haven't done any work with the brand and I've never driven any of its cars. But the QX30, it's a very capable car. It's very smooth, it's very refined, it's very comfortable. And it's not, it's not too bad a price either. You know, I've driven the Villar today and the, uh, the F-Pace, both cars of which are getting on for £70,000. But this is £37,000. And it's a very pleasant car to drive. So if you're on the market for a smooth, refined, comfortable SUV, then check out the QX30. But other than that, I'm going to end it here. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more car obsession. It's a bit bumpy there. Yeah? <gasps>